everybody welcome to another episode of scales 13 so a couple people were asking for an update on my Pueblo nil snake phoenix well here she is um in august i've had her for two years so that means she'll be a little bit over two years old she was very young when i first got her and i just wanted to get, tell you guys a couple small modifications i made to her enclosure very small right now i'm not done yet um so basically if you guys look, the majority of the enclosure, I actually replaced her uh, bedding with Aspen that I've been using. Um, I also gave her a bigger hide over here. And the reason I did that is because this is not a high humidity species. After doing some more research, I found out they don't need all that humidity like other snakes need um, in order to have a good, healthy respiratory system and to help with shedding. Granite. Uh, during the time where this animal's eyes do get that whitish, milky, opaque color right before it sheds, I do have an egg hide right here that she likes to chill in sometimes during the day. And as you can see right now, there is a little bit of moss left in here, but it is completely bone dry. Like if I show you right now, she hasn't shed recently, bone dry, right? But what I do is I put some wet moss in this hide as soon as I see that she's in shedding, just to help her shed. And then it usually dries out in about a day or two. So she, so even if she does stay in there longer than I would like, she's not exposed to high humidity for a very long time. And her sheds always seem to come out very nice. Now, if you do notice, there is a little bit of cypress mulch still left on this side. Um, now, the only reason I keep some cypress mulch around where her water bowl is, is so when I fill up the water bowl, I just want to make sure the water that I'm pouring in isn't getting all over the aspen and causing it to mold. The so one thing I don't like about aspen is that it, uh, it can mold easily, but it's better for milk snakes, probably milk snakes, um, because the thing is, uh, like I said, these animals like a dryer and also it's much easier for them to burrow in, right? However, the cypress mulch I do keep on this side is completely bone dry. I don't wet it um, or anything like that on purpose. It's only here as a safeguard, so that way if water splashes on the substrate, I'm not getting molding closure. So as you can see right here, completely bone dry. So it's not causing any humidity problems. One more thing that I will change um, soon is the fact that, it, yes, I'm still using a bulb for my snake at the moment. Um, I have a uh, heat pad with a thermostat basically on hold um, in, uh, in my Amazon um, wish list. And I was going to buy it, but... Amazon's all messed up right now because of this whole COVID-19 thing. Yeah, guys, I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing about it too. So am I, but it is dangerous. I mean, people um, at my wife's hospital have been dying of it. So, yeah, this this mess is real. So, unfortunately, it is affecting all of us in a way. But, yeah, that's why I don't have my heat pad yet. Um, I mean, that's a very minor thing for me, but it's a very it's a much more serious thing for other people who are actually sick with this disease. Anyway, enough about that. Um, so back to the Pueblo milk snake. So what I did was I thought out uh, some food right here for my Pueblo milk snake to eat. Now normally I only try to feed one prey item at a time. This time I have a few. Um, the reason being is because right now, well, she's mostly eating one or two of these uh, fuzzies right now. But the thing is, the pet shop that I went to didn't have enough uh, frozen feeders left. I don't mean to bring it up again, but it's probably because people have been stocking up on food because of this whole pandemic they were dealing with, right? So I, they had pinkies, so I got a couple packs of pinkies as well. I mean, at this stage, I really don't like feeding pinkies because they're uh, they're mostly fat and they don't have any solid bones, so it, they don't have as much calcium as a fuzzy or a full-grown mouse would have. But at least it's something I can give her for now, so at least she's getting a meal, right? Okay, so let me see if I can get her out so that way you guys can get a good look at her and I can feed her without her peeing all over me. That last part is uh, may just be wishful thinking because she is still a little bit flighty. Sorry guys, I have to put you down for two seconds because this snake at the moment does require um, me to use 
a little bit of finesse and oh oh my goodness speaking of which she just finished shedding awesome good good wow okay her shed went perfect all right guys so sorry about that little bit of a blackout ah yeah she's she, she's still doing the whole thing where she pees on you and she kind of like rubs her nasty part on you and ugh, it's gross but anyway um yeah so here she is let's see if i can zoom out on the camera so you can get a good idea of how big she is all right let's get her eating so she can stop squiggling so much let's just get her to knock something down here you go come on eat something please come on you haven't eaten in like well over a week so i think it's time for you to eat come on come on let's see if i can zoom in awesome i love the camera on this phone it's so easy to use even when you only have like one or two fingers that you can use all right come on come on can you eat can you eat for the camera it's just a pinky you can eat it that way it doesn't matter it's not like they actually have any claws or anything right now there you go yeah so yeah so hopefully soon she'll be able, she'll be big enough to uh knock down full-size mice and by the time she can do that she should be able to eat one normal sized mouse at a time so that way it'll be easier to gauge how much to feed her but yeah right now she's doing good as you can see her scales are beautiful she has this beautiful coloring to her um, she's nice and shiny no issues with her eyes or her mouth she's doing great right now can't wait to get that heat pad and see how that changes things maybe she'll grow a little faster after she gets the proper heating element should have bought the thing a long time ago. I knew I should have. Nah. Oh well. I don't want to bring up this whole thing anymore. Back to the snake. Right, babe. Uh oh. Whoop. Got a little too close. That's the thing, guys. I'm still, I'm still taming her out. She's uh. What? You want the fuzzy this time? You want something? There you go. Cool. Yeah. So sometimes I just feed her outside of the enclosure, because one, when I pick her up, she tends to poop, and if she poops outside the enclosure, it's less for me to clean. Um, also it gives me a second to interact with her. So at least then she's getting some type of reward or whatever when she's coming out of the enclosure. So it's not always a bad thing. Thing is though, I don't try to handle the mice too much before I pick her up. I mean, she's never bitten me before, but it doesn't mean it won't happen. I mean, if you go in there with your hands smelling like rodents, um, you're kind of asking for it, you know? But yeah. Come on, babe. Knock it down. Just trying not to get that in the camera. Come on. Yeah, I think this is a decent prey item for her right now. Her head's still really small. Granted, I know it can expand, but this isn't like the quickest prey item for her to eat. We'll probably move her up to hoppers now, but definitely nothing bigger than that. I don't think she can do full-grown mice yet. Yeah, she's about a foot long. She's not too fat, not too chubby. Uh, whoa. Why do you want to slide this way? No, no, no. Uh, sorry, guys. She's kind of like sliding. Smear of that mouse blood. It's kind of gross. Come on, babe. Knock it down. Now, granted, guys, I'm not a snake expert. This is only the second snake I've ever had in my life. So if I'm doing something wrong, please tell me. In a respectable way. But <laughs> please tell me just so that way I can uh, get that correct. Like I said, heat pad on the way with a thermostat. So that way I don't burn my snake. Good girl. Good. That one will give you a sufficient amount of calcium. You want that last one? Hmm? I don't know where it is, that way she doesn't like while out. Good snake. After she gets this one down, I'll put her back. Yeah, guys, she's doing pretty well. 
gorgeous coloration. Your sheds are coming out perfect. I really have no complaints about this snake right now. I've seen her drink water a couple times, which is awesome. Awesome, good girl. That made a good use of this uh, useless piece of paper. <laughs> All right, good girl. All right, let's put you back, okay, babe? Come on. And let's get you back in the enclosure. You want to go back in the enclosure? Yes, you do. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. You guys can see I got a lot of other hides in here, too. Got a little fern and some stuff like that. Her favorite hiding spot at the moment is right under the water bowl. <laughs> it's funny, I give her all this wonderful aspen to dig through and she wants to go right under the water bowl but eh, that's your favorite spot that's where she feels safe i'm not complaining oh sorry babe there we go yeah really can't wait to get that heating pad just so i can get this uh get this light out of here it'd be much easier too i don't have to worry about this thing falling off every time i open the enclosure Right, girly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's a quick update of my Pueblin milk snake. So, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on snake keeping, please let me know. Best way possible. And, uh, yeah, everyone have a great day. Peace.